everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and this is Katie's Book Nook. So today I will be talking about my May TBR and I am changing up how I do my TBRs a little bit. Usually I'll just pick a bunch of books that I'm interested in and list them off as my TBR and it can end up being like a huge list because I'll find that I'm interested in like seven or eight books in the upcoming month and I realized that I just never have the time to get to them. And I think it's kind of this mentality when you're on booktube, if you're reading a lot, a lot, and then you go through a period where you're maybe reading less that like you feel bad that you're not reading as much. But I've just kind of had some other hobbies that I want to balance with reading and I don't think I should feel bad for wanting to read instead of 100 books a year, maybe try and just hit 50 and like be satisfied with that goal or, you know, like not having like 10 books to talk about in a wrap up is okay. If you can just give like a detailed wrap up on like four or five books, that's fine as well. In the opposite direction, of course, if you're reading a lot, there's nothing bad with that, but I am in the position where I found myself reading a lot and then all of a sudden kind of like having like a life shift and not having as much time to read as many books and I just like don't want to feel bad for setting up these TBRs and then not being able to stick with them. So the way that I'm going to structure my TBRs from now on, I'll try this for the next few months, is I'm going to pick four books that I want to be my priority for the month and then like two smaller things, so either like some sort of like novella or comic or manga, something like that that is really like a quick and easy read, uh, maybe like a smut novel or something because those I can usually read pretty fast. And this leaves me at the pace of about one per week and if I stick to that pace throughout the year then I hit 50 books and I think that's a great way to hit the goal but also like not being stressed that I'm not reading super a lot like sometimes I just have days where I don't feel like reading and that's totally like fine like reading is supposed to be something that enhances my life and if I feel like I am feeling like I need to read so much that it's like detracting from my life like that's just not worth it to me. So I'm gonna talk about the four novels that I really really want to tackle in May and then talk about two mangas this month that I also want to read. Uh, with that being said, I am in the middle of two novels right now that I will probably have to wrap up in the beginning of May, but since I'm pretty far into both of them, like I don't think it will take me too long to finish, but I just haven't been reading the past few days and like that's fine, I just haven't been in the mood. So the first book is The Betrothed by Kiara Cass and at the point of filming I'm on page 163 in The Betrothed. Uh, Kiara Cass is known as the author of the Selection series which is a pretty beloved like fun bachelorette type dystopian novel and she is back with The Betrothed which takes place in this like made up kingdom. It seems kind of like medieval European but it, there's like different names and stuff. And we follow Hollis, who is just a regular lady at court. There's nothing too special about her that her parents think she would have any aspirations for the crown, but she catches the attention of the young King Jameson, and soon she finds herself betrothed to him. However, just when she's attained the status of a would-be queen, she meets a stranger who sees straight into her heart. And it is the story of Hollis's journey and how she deals with kind of navigating her love life in this very complicated situation. So yeah, I'm about halfway through this and I put it down for the reading rush and I haven't picked it back up yet, but it's a really quick, easy read. So I know that once I do read it again, I will fly through. The next book I'm in the middle of is Ruthless Gods by Emily A. Duncan. And at the point of filming, I'm on page 294, but actually in the mail yesterday, I just got a finished copy from the publisher, which I'm so excited about. And I have been annotating my arc, but I haven't been underlining, which if I annotate an arc, I usually won't underline it in case I want to pass it along or trade it or anything like that. So I'm probably going to take these annotations and transfer them over to the finished copy and underline and stuff like that. So that will take up some of my time. And then I will then continue on in the finished copy because I love a good hardcover. And it came with this awesome print, which I absolutely love. So thank you so much to St. Martin's Press for sending this along to me because I'm so, so excited about it. I love the book already. I'm like halfway through and it's amazing so far. Ruthless Gods is the sequel to Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, which came out last April, I believe. And I just think they look really, really cool together. It's such a cool feel. I honestly like really adore this book and the sequel is just 
living up to all my expectations. And like as this one under the cover had let them fear her under this dust under this dust jacket it says darkness never works alone i just think the design work on these books are phenomenal wicked saints is a gothic slavic inspired fairy tale-esque but dark fairy tale-esque story we have three main characters a girl named nadia who hears the whispers of the gods in her head a prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins and a monster hidden behind pale tortured eyes these three people are brought together for one purpose which is to kill the king with the hopes of stopping a never-ending war however things soon get much much more complicated than that yeah, I just, I love this. We read this for the Overhyped Book Club last July and I fell in love with the story and I'm really loving Ruthless Gods. I'm hoping that we will do a live show for this in May, but nothing is set in stone yet, but keep an eye out for an announcement. Okay, so now I'm gonna get on to the four novels that are going to be my priority for May. I'm thinking the first book that I'm gonna want to pick up this month is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Yes, I'm finally going to read this after like having it since it pretty much came out in 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. So I feel myself reaching for a sci-fi and this book has gotten rave reviews. Spencer's world has been under attack for decades and pilots are the heroes. She wants to become a hero herself and attend flight school. However, her father's tarnished reputation follows her around with a mark of shame. He abandoned his crew on a mission and was killed after he deserted them. And so that leaves Spence's chances of attending flight school slim to none. However, when Spence finds something accidentally, it could aid in her chances to finally achieve her dreams. Yeah, I just define survival. I just love the covers of this. I know there is a sequel out and I just think it's going to be a a great read and I haven't read anything sci-fi in like a hot second so I think that this will be good. The next book that I have is an arc that I was sent by Wednesday Books so thank you so much Wednesday so this is going to be a priority for me to read before it comes out in June and I've been really looking forward to reading this one. It is Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelas and this is a debut novel that is described as Moulin Rouge meets Phantom of the Opera which are two of my favorite things so how can I not like want to read this you know. So it says step right up to a spectacularly haunting debut novel infused with magic mayhem power and passion. Ooh la la. She was more than a mask without a name. Kalia is a 17 year old showgirl determined to make her mark as the greatest magician ever. She sets out for the famous lost city of Glorian where the allure of the stage beckons and meets some others searching for the limelight on her way there. And uh, yeah, I'm just really, really hyped about this one. I think I just love the cover. I just think it's going to be so cool and I'm really looking forward to reading this one. So yeah, I've just, I've kind of been waiting for it to get closer and closer to the debut date so that I can read it. The next book that I'm going to tackle in May is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. And this is an arc that my friend Steph forwarded to me after she read it, she passed it along. And in The Bone Houses, it's a standalone YA, like paranormal fantasy type that came out around October. October of 2019, I believe. And it's an adventure of a grave doker and a map maker. 17 year old Rin has been scraping together an existence as a grave digger ever since the death of her parents in a remote village. However, the problem with being a grave digger is that the dead don't always stay dead. The risen corpses are known as bone houses and legend says that they are the result of a curse. After Ellis, an apprentice map maker with a mysterious past, arrives in town, the corpses attack with a new ferocity. Together, Ellis and Rin embark on a journey into the heart of the mountains where they will have to face both long forgotten magic of the fey folk and deeply buried truths. Yeah, I mean, it just sounds like a really cool standalone fantasy and I love a good standalone fantasy. I feel like, you know, as YA fantasy readers were really there's a lot, a lot of series, but I think there can be some really good forgotten gems in the standalone fantasies, and so I'm really hoping that I'll like this one. And finally, I'm going for a novel that's a little bit different than what I usually read, and this is The Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth, and this is her first adult novel. I'm not sure if it's a standalone or the start of a series, but yes, I did get this arc at ALA, and 
I have a whole video on all the books that I got at ALA, which is the American Library Association Conference back in January, if you are interested to see. And I just, it's so interesting that they've deckled edges on an arc because you like rarely see that and like fold out things. Interesting. So yeah, this is her first adult novel and I've actually never read anything by her, believe it or not. So I'm curious to see like what I think of it. I, I don't know why I never read Divergent. I just didn't. I think after The Hunger Games, I was like, all right, I'm like over dystopian for now. So the tagline is saving the world once made them heroes, saving it again might destroy them. So 15 years ago, five ordinary teenagers were singled out by a prophecy to take down a catastrophic evil. After the dark one fell, the world went back to normal for everyone but them. So pretty much since their whole life's purpose was to fulfill this prophecy and they fulfilled it as teenagers, kind of dealing with the aftermath of having your life surface fulfilled and also dealing with the PTSD and lingering trauma from that sort of thing. So when the unthinkable happens and one of the chosen ones dies, the remaining four chosen ones come together again at their funeral and discover that Sloan was hiding way more secrets than they thought about the Dark One and that the Dark One's ultimate goal was bigger than any of them ever thought and now they don't know if they even have what it takes to fight back. I just think it's going to be so interesting kind of like exploring a different side of the superhero stories. It's kind of like after the whole Chosen One thing and then also it's adult work so I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit more mature and explore some darker topics so I'm really really just like so curious about this one so that's why i feel myself kind of gravitating towards it because i'm just intrigued and this one did come out i think either in march or april and now for the last two mangas that i want to pick up this month i have yona of the dawn volume four and this was gifted to me for my birthday by my dear friend Kaylee. so thank you so much Kaylee, for giving this to me and yona of the dawn follows the story of yona who is a princess but when her kingdom comes under attack and she has to flee from home she has to go on a journey of self-discovery to fight back and take what is rightfully hers and i'm just following along the series it's really cute and fun and i just really enjoy it it's a good mixture of like cute fluffiness but with also like some badassery and like adventure and the next one that i want to read is happiness volume one by shuzu oshimi and this was actually i literally just got this in the mail from my friend chanel for my birthday and i just like as soon as i saw it, i'm like oh i really really want to read this in this manga's first volume we follow makoto ozaki in his first year of high school and his life is pretty boring and then everything changes when a pale thin girl knocks him to the ground in an alley and offers him a choice and so what is his choice so yes it's a vampire manga and i have friends that have read it and loved it and i just looking at this cover love the art style i can just already tell that i'm gonna really really enjoy it and so with that being said that is the last manga that i want to tackle in may so yeah, I'm just really hoping that kind of shortening my TBR and kind of setting some books as like a top priority that I can get through about one book a week and Ooh. just really enjoy the books and reading, taking my time with them and absorbing them and there's no need to read every book. As I say, Rome was not built in a day, so yeah, I'm not looking to read a whole library in a year. So I'm just gonna pick the books that speak to me at the moment and that's that. Comment down below and let me know what you are looking forward to reading in May. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.